Hi, I'm Paul from the Robot Mower and this video is about all the tools that you need in order to do a self-installation of a robot mower. We normally use a wire laying machine so that cuts a groove in the grass and then it lays the wire straight into it. But there are times when we need to do it by hand. So if we need it by hand, these are some of the tools that we have. So, I start with my, what I use for measuring. So I've got a one meter piece of bamboo that I've cut and then I've marked off key distances. So in this case, 30, 35, 40 centimeters from the edge. So what I use there is I use this to measure the distance from the edge of the lawn to where the wire goes in. So I find it easier than a tape measure, um, uh, but make sure that before you start installing any wire, you work out all the distances that you need and then mark them off. Next, we have the wire itself. So make sure that you have enough wire to do your whole installation and preferably in one complete length. We have two stands as a wire, so this is the, um, our normal wire, so that's what we use in the garden here. Um, and we haven't had any problems with it. If you live in an area where you're likely to get badgers, rabbits, or um, other wildlife which could dig up um, the wire and you're worried about it, then we do sell a thicker wire which has extra insulation and extra protection and it comes with a 10 year guarantee against breaks. So in order to keep the wire on the ground, we peg it. So we put these pegs in every meter or so, or more frequently if we're doing, um, if the ground is not flat or if we're going around corners. So the idea is to keep the wire as close as possible to the ground. And then over time, the wire will sink into the ground. So we peg these in and then to knock them into the ground, we use a wooden mallet. So the reason we use a wooden mallet rather than a normal hammer is that it's quite easy to snap the end of these off. So if you haven't got a wooden mallet, it's not a problem. You can use a hammer, but just put a piece of wood over the top and knock it in gently. If you're doing an installation at the beginning of the year, you may find that the, gra the ground is soft enough that you can just push these in by hand and then finish it off if necessary with the heel issue. The other type of peg we use are these, and these pegs are used for keeping the base station in place. So again, we knock these in with wooden mallet. So, although we could use um, pegs all the way around, um, I prefer not to do that, because first of all, there's a lot of plastic in the ground, and second of all, it takes a while for the um, wire and the pegs to sink down into the ground so you can't see them. So what I tend to do is to cut a groove in the ground and then lay the wire into that groove. So to cut the groove I use this, so this is a straight edge um, edging tool. Um, you, can, you can cut a groove in this, open up the grass a bit and then slide the wire into it. in order to push the wire in, rather than doing it by hand, find that the handle of a paintbrush is the best thing to use. You push the wire in and then you can push it down a couple of, couple of uh, um, centimetres below the grass. If you find that you haven't got uh, one piece of wire that will do the whole length, so you need to join two pieces of wire together, then use a decent um, joint. So we use these. These are gel filled joints which are specifically made for this type of wire. You take both ends of your wire you want to join, slide them into the joint making sure that they go all the way in and then close the joint with a pair of pliers. You need to keep make sure that the joint closes fully, so you may need to have a couple of goes at um, both ends of the joint. As long as you can get those completely closed, the gel in there will keep the water out 
and you should get a good connection. You don't need to remove the insulation from the wires before. This, this joint actually cuts into the insulation, into the core of the wire and make sure that it's got a good connection. If we've laid all the wire and we're ready to hook it back up to the base station, before I do that, what I tend to do is use a voltmeter. So I measure the resistance around the wire um, to make sure that I've got no breaks. That's especially if I've put in joints. So if you measure it and it's zero resistance or very close to zero, you know you've got a good loop even before you put it into the base station. If the base station then shows an error saying it thinks you've got a, a broken loop, then you know that the problem is not with the wire itself, but more with the connections that you've um, put into the base station, or the way you've connected it to the base station. I always use a pair of um, wire strippers to take off the insulation. You can use a pair of pliers, but using a pair of wire strippers, just make sure that you only take the insulation off and you don't take any of the wire with it. We've now got the perimeter wire in place, base station in place, we just need to get the power to the base station. So if you can have your um, power to your transformer and your transformer inside and purely run the low voltage wire to your base station, that's great. But in a lot of, lot of circumstances you find that's not possible. So either you'll need to put the, just the transformer outside with the plug inside or you'll need to put the plug and the transformer outside. So if you're putting a plug outside, make sure that, you use a, that you've got it in a socket which is sealed and is, is rated to be outside. These types of sockets clamp down over the top of the uh, plug and make sure that there's a good seal there and no water can get in. Then you still need to have the question of what do you do with the transformer. So for the transformer, I tend to use a dry box. So these come in various shapes and sizes and different makes. So make sure you get one which is the right size for your transformer and any extra cable that you want to keep out the way. With these ones it's nice and simple. You put your transformer into the box and any extra wire. There's a number of holes that, that they have. So you've got one, one uh, hole for the wire coming in from your mains and the other hole for the wire going out to your base station. And once you put them in there, clamp it down, that'll keep it dry for the whole season. I do tend to check them every now and then. I've never had any problems with them, but in the, at the end of the season, I do tend to take the transformer and the dry box inside and keep them in, um, inside for the winter. So that's all the tools that we use. If you've got any questions, give us a call or get in contact with, it, contact with us at info at therobotmower.co.uk. Thanks very much.